Hey guys, it's Forsaken Reality here with another tutorial. And in this one, we're going to be looking into our Squid Games AI, which a lot of people have been requesting so that you can basically run with your AI right here. We will look into a multiplayer application as well, so you can run with other players in a future video. Also set up so you're not gonna die. Blood on the ground. Green light. Red light. Green light. We'll shoot off at random times and kill random AI. Red light. Oh, Green light. Some died. And so I'm setting up an AI can make it to the finish line basically, then it will die right over in there. Like the player. And it resets when you die or make it to the finish line. So without further ado, we will get into setting this up. The first thing I'm gonna do is just move my test project over here out of the way. And you'll notice when you load up your project for the first time, if you moved all your files around like I did, you moved your map, you'll want to go into your project settings, maps, and you can simply just set your third person game mode there and your map here. And now when you load up the project, everything will load up fine. But you can simply just go in and load your map like this. You'll notice that there's weird shadows here from the previous one. If you didn't know how to get rid of those, you can simply build lighting and that will rebuild. I'm going to pause it while it rebuilds, but that's what you do. And my lighting is finished rebuilding here now. So we will get into setting up the AI. All right. So the first thing we're going to need to do now is get some assets. Um, we're going to want to get this military weapons dark pack. I'll uh, leave a link to, to this pack in the description. And basically what we're only thing we're going to be really using from this is the sounds for the gunshots. And you'll notice that it doesn't come for Unreal Engine, a higher version. So you'll need to import it into 4.21 before you send your files over to your project. So once you, yeah, you might need to just pause the video and download Unreal Engine 4.21. And when you do that, you can import these. And if you don't want the sounds specifically from these, you can get the sounds elsewhere. This is how I got them because it has some nice sounds in here. Um, so once you have this downloaded and set up in a project, where you decided to choose your own sounds, you can come in here. And all I did was I went to the rifle fire queue right there. You can right click this, migrate, just click. You want the fire and you want the fire queue. So we want to cl right click, migrate. Okay. And we'll go to our Squid Game project, go into your content folder and select. And that will move your files over to your project. And you can just close this out because we only want the sound. And you'll notice that in your project, you now have the firing sound here. And I'm just going to grab the sound and move it here. Move these wa waves. Mix up redirectors, save all. And you just delete this once you move those over. Save your sounds here. 
Um, first thing we're going to do once we have this in is we're actually going to want to get some blood splatters. So I'll also leave a description for this asset in the launch in the uh, description, and it's some free blood tea cows. You just want to open in the launcher or download those, and then you want to go to your library. Search for blood, add to project, and then add to your squid game project. And pause this while it adds. Okay, you know, once that's added to your project, you can just close out of this. And you should have your blood right here. And this will give you some nice blood decals for the ground. And now we're going to be in setting up our test AI. So I'm just going to go into characters and create a new character BP underscore test AI. I'll just name it running AI. And you'll want to go into your mesh select the third person animation blueprint and select the mannequin male or female it doesn't matter and if you want to just set them up so they're blue you can just come in here right click create a material instance you can just name that blue check that And just set a blue color, save, out of that, come into your mesh and select the, blot, the blue body and now just have a blue AI character right here. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is go into our event graph. Or actually, I'm going to deal with the collision first, so we want to go to our capsule. Scroll down so we don't forget this. Turn this on custom. And we're going to want to ignore camera so we the camera isn't bumping into all the AI. Go to our mesh. Custom. And do the same thing right here for the camera. And that is about it, I believe, for the collision. And we want to come in here. We can just delete this one right there. Um, first thing we want to do is get actor of class. This is going to allow us to get our doll. So that we can have access to red light if the red light variable is true, basically. And we're going to promote this to a variable so that we can use it later on. We don't need to we don't need to keep dragging it up here to connect to anything. We can just get our doll reference and get any variable like this. So the first thing we're going to do is create two booleans. We're going to check that the AI is dead. And if they're in the finish zone, and I'm actually going to just go back to my character, oops, winning zone. Okay, so I'm going to make sure these variables are named the same just so, because they mean the same thing. I don't want to get mixed up later on down the road. It's good to keep your naming convention the same. So we're going to track hold B and Click. I'll create a branch. We're going to check if the player is dead or if the player is in the winning zone. And we'll plug this into the condition. So 
basically if the player is dead or they're in the winning zone if it's false means that we're just going to run the code normally and from here we're going to get our doll reference and we're going to check if the game is starting hold b and click the creative branch we're going to drag out a false from this so we're not dead and we're not in the winning zone we're then going to check if the game is starting comment this check if ai is dead or in winning zone and i'll run true true or false there check if game has started this will be used to determine if AI should move on the initial starting of the game. It'll delay the AI from moving and stuff like that. So this variable is set true by default and when the game starts it goes false. So when it's false, we'll start running through more code and then we're going to check if red light is true. So create a branch. And we're going to run this at false. So if the game has started and the AI is going to be checking to see if the red light is true or not. Determine if it just should stop or continue going. And if the AI is, if it's not a red light for now, we'll just set up move forward. So the way we're going to do this is add movement input, just the input which you'd normally use for your keys, but in this one we're going to automatically set up and move forward. So we're going to use our character movement, it forward. Oops, sorry, we need the capsule component. Get forward vector. And we're going to plug this into the world direction, so we're moving forward. And vector length. Plug this into the world scale, and that will move us forward at whatever our AI speed is set to. And we'll actually want to make some adjustments to that, so that not, you can keep it the way you want, but I like slow them down a little bit by default we'll also be setting up some random uh speed differences so that the ai don't all move at the same speed but i'm just going to character movement default movement speed 400 so that's the maximum so if we're coming into false so it's not a red light our ai will move forward So it's going to check for the red light. And if there is no red light, I'm just going to bring this down here like so. And if there is no red light, move forward at current speed. And we can actually go up here to our begin play. And we can set a random speed for our AI. This is all that when each AI is created in the world, it'll set a random speed basically. Max walk speed. We'll set max walk speed. And the way we're going to do that is get a random float range. Plug that in. Right now it's float from zero to zero, but we want from 100, which will be the minimum speed, which will be near a walk, and 400, which will be the max speed, which means AI will be jogging. Set random human speed on I. Create a reference with doll. And I'm going to 
comment this whole thing, begin play. So this is the DM play and this is what's running on it. So now we have our move forward. I'm just going to test this out. You can throw an AI in the world and if you hold control or alt, sorry, you can drag out and you let go of alt, click again, let go of alt and click again. And you can continue to create a bunch of AI. Hold on. And when the game starts, this should be in there. And we're moving at different speeds. They won't die or anything like that because if you haven't set up anything, it'll just stop. Green light. Okay. So there's the moving AI Red started. Light. And I'm just going to hop into my third person character. Let's set my blue color on here, on my mesh. Just because I want everything to be blue. Okay, so we have our AI running. Now, we want to work on what happens when our AI dies. So, if the red light is true... Right now, it's not doing anything, so the AI is just stopping moving. It's not running into our move forward code, looping through it on tick, so it can't run anymore. So if it's true, we're just going to do everything in here at once. Because we don't want it running through, it's spamming and checking everything and simulating physics multiple times on dead AI. Dead AI. And the way we're going to reset this is move this over some. We're going to create a sequence. Plug it in right here. And if the, when the red light goes false, it will reset this. It won't run it, it just resets it so that when it goes true, it'll run it again. This will allow it to check AI that aren't dead. Um, from here, we want to create a death chance. So the way we're going to do that is a simple one. And we're going to create a branch, random integer. Greater than or equal to, you can also do greater than, but I want to do if it's equal to 3 as well, I'm going to set to 3, and the maximum integer that can come through here is 5, so if it's greater than or equal to, five, to 3, so it's 3, 4, or 5, then, then it's true, and the AI can die, and if not, nothing will happen. The AI will basically survive, and they can continue moving on again. That's our death chance. I'm just gonna grab these and slowly move them down some more here. And if there is a true death chance, then we will want to add a delay between our deaths so that all the gunshots don't fire off at the exact same time and everyone just doesn't drop. It'll seem more realistic, like it's checking for different AI that are moving killing them at different times. But you, do, but you want to be careful that this delay doesn't go too long so that it isn't running into your, if you go into your doll blueprint. Um, where would it be? So you basically you don't want it to interfere with the rotating. So basically if it was rotating back two seconds on a two second interval or three second interval, then we will set the delays maximum somewhere to elite that or lower. 
And we're going to use a random float in range. And it's going to be from point one, so they can die almost instantly. Two, three. Up to three seconds. It's the random delay between deaths. Maybe your AI. And if once this happens, we will want to simulate physics. And we'll set that to true. And we'll want to set that on both our capsule and accidentally open Visual Studio. You don't need to do this. Capsule, mesh, simulate on both of these. And we'll comment that as ragdoll. And now we will want to I'm actually going to set the AI dead right here. So now the current AI is dead. If they can make it through this chance, this death chance. And from here we want to spawn our decals and sounds. So first I'm going to Play sound application and my rifle fire. I'm going to get the fire cue because you notice that the difference between a, a web wave and a cue is that the cue can store a lot of different uh, cue uh, waves so that right here it'll play different firing sounds, so it won't just be the exact same sound every single time. And you drop that down, you can adjust your sound and your pitch. Some adjust some things right there. So I'll play the gunshot sound. Now we want to spawn our decal. The way we're going to do this is we're going to get our mesh. Hit world location. And I'm just going to drag out, type spawn decal at location. And one thing we want to do is go to our mesh and search for decal. And you see this receive decals. If you tick this off, now the blood won't splatter up weirdly on your AI's mesh. That's a simple fix for that. Um, from here, you want to spawn. And respond decal you want to drag out and we're going to add a random diff we're going to change up where the x and y will splatter so that it will won't just always be directly in the exact same spot it will splatter in a randomly around the slightly around the ai spread out a little bit and the way we're going to do this is Z is going to be zero because we don't want it to go up and down. And we want it to go along the X axis. So it's going to random float range from zero, which will be right under, under the AI to a X value of 100. And for Y, B. We'll do the same thing for Y. And we'll plug this in for location. Basically, it'll allow it for a little bit more random. So, we'll take off this. For our location, for our lifespan, I'm just going to set it to like 
20, so it'll stay for 20 seconds. And that affects performance, but we don't have too much blood going all the time in the, in the game, so I don't think the 20 will affect it too much. And I'm going to create an array called blood array. That's going to be used to store all of our different blood de decals that we can spawn. So you change this to an array right here. And you search for material interface and select that for an object reference. Compile. And notice you can now select and add in lots of different materials here. And I'm just going to set some of the high velocity blood materials. And I'm going to think I skipped this one right here. It's a little smaller and just went straight to the last one. So now we have some blood materials. Out of these are different splatters that can appear on the ground. So it's not at the same one every time. So now I'm going to get our blood array. Drag out. And we're going to get a copy. Right now it's just getting the first decal. Always spawning the first decal. And then get a random one for this. This one we're going to get a random integer in range. It's not a float. The only difference between a float and an integer is the decimal. And the minimum is going to be... Like, actually, we're not going to use this random integer in range. We're just going to get a random integer from the length. So basically length of the array which is four it'll roll a random number in here and it will put the number out here and then give us a random blood splatter so we'll get a random blood material from the array try to organize this a little better here bring these down some yeah. and spawn spawn blood decals just looking through some things here. I'm actually going to drag out true here. So that they don't stop directly on the line. The second in the winning zone, they'll, they'll continue um, beyond, past the line and give you room to get in there. You want to like walk around the AI. So I'm just going to do a little test here and see what happens. different speeds. Red light. Green light. Fell to the floor, so I need to fix some simulation issue right there. Red light. That should be an easy fix though. Green light. Red light. Green light. Okay, so now we're our AI is falling through the floor. I'm looking at this quickly. Okay, so I, just, I think I just remembered what that was. Our mesh isn't set to physical collision. So yeah, so you go to your mesh, query only, no physics, collision enabled, pile and save. Should Red light. Green light. Red light. Green light. 
There's some issues with the sound and the blood splatter for some reason here. And that's because we haven't set the location for the sound. And I'm going to set that to the... Um, mesh of hit location. And the gunshot's going to go off near the mesh that actually gets shot. And you can play with where the sound actually goes off, I suppose. Like you can use the doll reference if you want the plant sound to play from the doll and see how that works. I don't know how you get from the doll. You can. Cast your third person character, which might actually be a better one. Your player character. Multi their variable. Character reference. So now there's a reference for the player character. And we could do this, get our character. And we don't want a root component, like we want to get our mesh. Let's so see how this sounds right here quickly. I'm also going to look into why the blood de decals haven't spawned. I actually haven't set a size for a decal. I'm just going to set those to 50. Let's test out to see what's going on. Okay. splatters and you can always Red adjust light. the random death chance so they Green light. you can always adjust the death chance right here so basically if you want them to die less often you can just simply set a higher valuable here variable here in here, so now it has to be over eight for them to die. So less of a question. So they'll die. Red light. And there's less of them dying. Green light. It's blood splatter and everything. Start moving too soon. That's going to be everything for this one. If you found this video helpful and want to see more, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new tutorial video uploads. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below or join my community Discord using the link in the description. Thanks, and I'll see you all in the next one.